breasts. That's what this film is about. One not so fine day, I found myself being suspected of having breast cancer. My worst fears came alive. Not just the fear of death, but the fear of losing a breast. The fear of having to wear this, a breast prosthesis. Would I be shunned by society? Would I ever be desirable? Would losing a breast mean losing my entire womanhood? As I started making this film, my mind got flooded with images. In fact, I began seeing breasts everywhere. And while I wanted to explore what breasts mean to women, the response I got was this. Only a few brave women spoke. They're just part, you know, it's like, what do I feel about my hand? What do I feel about my leg? It's really not all that different. Well, to put it simply, I think, I constantly think there's something wrong, something or the other wrong with my body. So I usually think I'm a defected piece. <laughs> it's only when my boyfriend's complimented on them that I realize I have a good pair. I hate my breasts. They make me uncomfortable about the way I see myself. They're a bit awkward for my body type. They make me, they, they pull me back from all the stuff that I want to do. It reminds me that I'm going to be a mother one day and it gives me a positive feeling within myself that you know I'll feed children. It is serving me no purpose. <laughs> Actually it's there and I'm living with it. I have been constantly reminded that I'm some sort of aberration because of my breasts. They certainly don't make me feel empowered. In fact I'm made to feel vulnerable again and again. I'm obsessed. Um, I do obsess. I talk about my boobs all the time. They were everywhere. It was so embarrassing. But my own mm, was just not appearing. After 10th grade, uh, they grew a bit for a year and then they just stopped. They won't grow. That's it. <laughs> then, one day, because I'm a woman all of a sudden, because buckle for a very, very long time as a child. Like very, very long time. So suddenly she's, she's becoming a woman. Look at me. I don't say look at me at all. I'm just like, don't give me any attention, please. My breast is like, look at me. I was one of the bigger people among the more flat girls around me. And for whatever reason, those were the girls who were actually considered good-looking, sexy, intelligent, or whatever, for whatever reason. I just started associating having the big breast with something that was pulling me down. I'd always hang out with this pile of guys. And yeah, they treated me like one of them. They talked to me about things they wouldn't dare talking to, to other girls because of the insecurity of being judged. But they tell me everything from their biological changes like when we were pubescent, everything, because I was just one of them. And yeah, I was this girl who didn't have boobs, so they thought I was this girl who wouldn't judge them. <laughs> That's what separated me from other girls. I started developing breasts when I was only eight years old. I was totally unprepared for it and felt very uncomfortable because I got singled out in my class. I mean, I was a little girl with big breasts and it was embarrassing to look so different from everyone else and having to wear a bra at that age there was a great sense of shame I shut myself up in the bathroom and I tried my mother's bra because I was so excited about the fact that you know one day even I will be wearing it also I started to get sexual attention at that age itself so I had to deal with predatory adults I think I got some kind of a sexual pleasure, if I remember correctly. Standing in front of a mirror, sneaking in the bra, and wearing it, and then looking in the mirror again, and knowing that it doesn't fit from any angle, and that it's, it's just hanging. As a result, I would find excuses not to meet people, and just shut myself up in my room. So I gradually found myself becoming a complete loner, 
all because of my breasts. All the images that have been created about breasts have been about, you know, that, you know, they are two big things and they are together and there's a cleavage. And every guy who I've spoken to about just want to get their face there. I've been very conscious of the fact that I have smaller breasts and they're too, too wide apart and there's no cleavage. Most people are unhappy with their bodies but that's, that's now not how it should be because it happens only because we have created images of perfect bodies. Here is a guy who I really like and he's made it very clear that he likes voluptuous women and he's uh, been very candid that you know when he goes to a movie hall or he watches a typical Bollywood movie he likes women like uh, Bipasha Basu and you know people who are evidently well endowed. I wanna, I wanna, Will he be less attracted to me? Is he just infatuated be, by me now? And tomorrow, you know, he could be more attracted to a woman who is. A perfect looking woman would be thin, like the rest of her body would be thin, but she would on the whole be, you know, curvaceous or voluptuous. Yeah, I've got thin arms, sticky thin legs and I'm thin everywhere and very small. I wear small clothes, but it's just, this is too big for me. Sometimes I wish they're bigger, but then I'm not very happy when I think like that. But just the fact that I keep thinking about them, it's the idea, the it keeps following me there, whatever I do when I'm home, when I'm having a bath, when I'm in the classroom, when I'm in the market. Maybe no, maybe no one's looking, but I feel uncomfortable. It's I feel I, I'm conscious of every second that they move. So now, whenever I meet women, I usually tend to think about their breasts too, like you know, in a way like um, compare them to my. It's like Hello Rekha's dress and then Hello Rekha, you know. So, um, and it's not that people say that. It's obvious if I walk into a room like this, I will feel that. Akansha has basketballs. Uh, Miriam has watermelons. Someone has Mosambi. And they'd look at me and they'd be like, and you have table tennis. And I'd be like, balls? And they'd be like, table. When they're actually say talking about a woman being hot, they have a critical role to play in the analysis. The other euphemisms like cute and all can go with feet and face and nose and ears, but hot. I'm always called cute. I'm never called pretty or sexy or beautiful. Uh, and I yearn, yeah, I do, I mean. No qualms about it. I want to be called beautiful. I want to be called, she called me beautiful once. I want to be called pretty. Compared to a flat-chested person, you would get a lot more attention. And, but it's, it's a lot of um, uh, extremely uh, physical focused attention. I don't stay with my parents. I very often visit them. So whenever I'm visiting them, most of the times I end up changing my clothes repeatedly thinking that I should look decent enough. And what is decent? Decent in the sense that my breasts are not very visible, although one can't hide them beyond a point. That, hey, you know, talk to me. This is my, you know, look at me here, kind of thing. You have to do that off and on because, and I'm not, it's not specifically related to men. There are a lot of women who do that as well, you know. If someone looks at my boobs, I'd be like, okay. It's looking at my boobs, which accidentally happens sometimes. Probably they look at my boobs thinking, okay, where did it all go? But I feel like, okay, he's looking. <laughs> I'll be very happy. Can we just talk and have a conversation without you staring at my cleavage? So I put my hands away. If you're wearing a western outfit, you're wearing to, you're wearing it to reveal your body or to show your uh, breast or your body, 
is much more uh, you know it's settled in people's mind when i'm going to a disc or i'm wearing something nice and slinky then i like the idea of men being there who are looking there and saying oh she's hot there was a woman passing she was wearing a very small top i don't know what is a top called and there was a policeman he was constantly looking at her breast and she said ki pehle dekha nahi hai kya kabhi usko you know she was very angry so he said aise to nahi dekhe kabhi i once had a boyfriend who insisted that i cover myself up even more because i'm large breasted he felt embarrassed and unnerved by the constant stares at my breasts maybe he was just trying to be protective in fact i think he was actually quite concerned but anything i was seemed indecent but it's always like that my breasts are always more of a problem to others than to me if i want to look sexy for me uh, accentuating my breasts is an important part mm. I would also wear a short skirt. I think I have nice legs. I mean, if you you look at me in a sari, then people say, "Wow, well, what a serious, you know, job like working woman." Because when you are interacting with state authorities, there is that image that you have to live into, that you know, some government official is only coming, and there's a serious image of a serious working Indian woman. You have to look dignified, graceful. So if I change my dress and wear jeans or a spaghetti, they would suddenly those the eyes will tell you that they think I'm a slutty person, or maybe I am one of those. In a way, I realized how little I knew about myself. I had also always listened to the voices around me, just words, but they can hurt. But I realized I wasn't the only one. One breast cancer victim was abandoned by her husband who said mujhe tooti gudiya nahi chahiye just words I went to an all girls college so my friends started talking about it talking about breast and other things as well but in a way that I was not used to I had another friend who was 36 c and uh, I hate myself for uh, calling my friends by their sizes and she used to look at me and say oh you know like you're you're not so well endowed your guy will have a problem they would say bichari you will have such a bad sex life oh how will you make your boyfriend happy my classmates tell me the the word they use is you're not equipped enough i used to really rubbish them dismiss them but when i was on my own then i would think about it and it really pestered me <laughs> and it got into me i guess But yeah, after everything is over, when I sit back and think about what she said, yeah, she has a point. She has it up there. I don't. The next time I ask my boyfriend or something, and he would be like, "Of course not, baby. Of course not. You're beautiful." And you know, you're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I am." <laughs> All my boyfriends wished I was bigger, and they told it to me, which is not the pleasantest thing to know. But yeah. I appreciate the honesty. I know the reasons why women think the way they do about their body. So if it happens to others, I would tell them, you know, this is the wrong way. Don't think like this. But it's happening to me, and I am sort of perpet perpetrating this on my own self. So here I am. I am the perpetrator here of of this condition. Yeah, I feel really nice when my friends tell me that. Okay, you still have time, or probably someday when I'm married. I'm breastfeeding. I'd grow bigger. I feel good. I still have hope. I wish I was bigger. I've always thought about it. I mean, I want to have spoken to my father about it, but about getting augmentation done up here. <laughs> but 
No, I don't think it's the right thing to do. It's fake. This is what I have. I might as well live with it. If it didn't have surgery and it was something you could just take a lot of tablets and do, I might have done it. I resent the fact that women all over have been doing it for centuries, doing, going through so much pain to look a particular way. Whether it's surgery or whether it's facial hair, body hair or whatever. I bought a push-up bra and, one, and I just wore it once and the effect it had on people and the compliments I got from my buddies who had known me for years. I mean the whole reaction was, oh my god, did you get a boob job done? If I have to go on a night out or a party or anything, I make sure I wear a tight top and shove pads inside my bra. If you are flat, you probably can do something about it. You can stuff your bra, you can wear a padded bra, whatever. I mean, there's, you can wear the kind of clothes that accentuate your body. But I don't know, if, you, if you're really top heavy and you're not comfortable with it, there's nothing that you can do and it's going to show on your face. If I wear a padded bra, it'll help me for some time. But again, it'll just be to make people think that it's... I've even tried putting duct tape around it you know, once to make it like really small and it hurt when I pulled it off so I never did it again. In one version of the epic Ramayan, Surpnakha, the demon princess, has not just her nose but her breast too chopped off by Lakshman at Ram's bidding. This was a violent attack on her by men to castrate her of her power and sexuality. Some women face it every day. We call it sexual harassment. I was sexually abused as a child and my breasts were part of the abuse. I felt very guilty and held my breasts responsible for my trauma when I grew up. But later I realized, why should I do that? It's not my fault or the fault of my breasts. What, if, what, if, what happens if I'm raped? And I think the first thing I've thought of is the first thing I'll do is this. I don't know why, it's just that whole... This is the field of attack I feel for myself. Whether it be harassment at work, abuse during my adolescence, or even something like what my ex-husband did once. We had a fight and in a fit of rage, he grabbed and squeezed my breasts hard to teach me a lesson. I mean, what better way could he find to get back at me? My breasts were a symbol of my weakness. You know, these young boys who come selling you these little things on the bus. And uh, he came, he came to us and while he was going, he just pinched me on my breast and just, just matter of factly just went to the next seat to sell whatever he had to sell. It's not like men on the streets or men on the bus need any reason. People, uh, women with big breasts get harassed, women with small breasts get harassed. I mean, I had no breasts then. There were no breasts. I was like a small child with chest, with a chest and two nipples on them. That's it. But uh, the whole reaction was that, you know, why had I not put my hand, why was I not sitting cross, uh, you know, with my hands crossed around my chest. I mean, the whole thing was like, you know, I could have avoided this situation. So whenever I wear such clothes, what I actually do is I never look in strangers' eyes. I just walk past, but I don't look in anybody other than the people whom I know or whom I'm going to meet or whom I'm with. That's almost like imagining as if there are no people who think like this. My shoulders droop down and my hands are constantly like this. 90% of the time I'm actually sitting like this or I'm on my mobile phone and just trying to cover something. At the end of the day, I almost always sit like this. Almost always have my hands here. My hand is always like this to protect. I have been used to just walking confidently and with my chest sticking out actually because there was nothing there. So that, that does resurface lots of times and I'm, it's, it's made known to me a lot of times. Ki, I think you should cover it a bit or I think you should slouch a bit, it's looking too big. And I do it and I'm immediately, I, I, I hate myself for forgetting to do it. I, I'm generally, I'm like this. While at the same time I'm going for a party or you know this thing and I'm like more open and wearing, deliberately wearing stuff which reveals my breasts or reveals my body. Looking around, my hmm also demanded I set them free. Hey, look at me. Bonjour, madame. 
I mean, a guy in a party is thinking no different from a guy on a street thinking. I mean, they're both thinking about your breasts and they're both thinking of how they could touch them and they could do things with you. But there's a sense of comfort that, you know, the same class of people are there and you're used to that class of people and they... It's fine, I mean... It's the same as saying that a roadside Romeo hitting on you or a nice classy guy hitting on you, I mean... There's this... You associate with one and you don't associate with the other. So one becomes a pervert and the other becomes an admirer. There are huge advantages to be born, being born a woman and a woman with breasts. Because let's accept it, they have a mesmerizing influence on men. Women get work done from other men, you know, it's uh, maybe because it's sexual. In some ways, like uh, having your chest out, having making sure that you wear clothes with deep necklines. I have observed a lot of my women colleagues, you know, being nicely flirty, dressed up, you know, their body language is very open at the workplace with the bosses and with the male colleagues. Uh, they'll put their arms around them or they'll kuchi koo them. I mean, they, they do certain things. Some women use their eyes, some women use their breasts, some women use their legs, whatever they find more attractive. So it's, it is a physical attraction that you're trying to put forth. Like uh, this friend of mine uh, who used to be a colleague used to always say, you know, when you're hiring a woman, she should either have a functional value or an aesthetic value. You know? He was fine with hiring a woman only for her aesthetics. The ground is set for you. If you really open your mouth and if you're a complete fool or you piss them off completely by saying something that they don't want to hear or you're completely opposite of what they think you are, then of course you lose it. But as long as you're neutral after that, you won the war. I think a man would hire a woman if she knew how to use her breasts. He wouldn't hire her if she had pretty breasts, you know. It's about knowing how to use something. It's about what personality you're putting forth at the end of the day. Have it, flaunt it, they like it, you like it. You win, they win, everybody wins. So what's the big deal? At my first job, nobody took me seriously because of my breasts. And later I was sexually harassed by my male colleagues. They would pass night comments in my presence about my breasts. They would crack jokes, laugh, imitate my walk. They saw my heavy-breasted frame as amusing, as titillating, even though I would be conservatively dressed. And I found no support either in the management or in my female colleagues. I just had to leave the job. Specifically, I don't want like you know people looking down my breasts when they're talking to me. Also because um, Men tend to, uh, men because you meet more men in journalism, uh, also tend to look at attractive women as, as dumb, you know. And it takes a long time breaking that image. So I used to, in that, I suppose you could say I used to dre therefore dress down. All my life I have been fighting these prejudices. And it's taken a lot, several years of hard work to reach where I have in my chosen profession and to have people address me and my work seriously, despite my having large breasts. That is why I'm not coming on camera, because I'm scared that if people see me talking about my breasts, their attention will naturally go back only to my breasts. And I will once again lose the dignity and the respect that I have earned for myself so painstakingly. It was a big relief to find out that I didn't have breast cancer. But through that experience, I realized that I too had been looking at myself through the male gaze. How, over the years, my perception of my body had been shaped by that gaze. Can such self-perceptions be changed? Actually, I wouldn't want to celebrate it or glorify it or anything. 
बट एक्सेप्ट इट एक्सेप्ट द ब्रेस्ट एज अ नॉर्मल एज आई वुड एक्सेप्ट माई ईयर और लुक एट माई ईयर और टोज और वट एवर या यू कैन सिट बैक इन सॉर्ट ऑफ लुक एट इट इन अ वेरी फ्रॉम अ वेरी अकेडमिक परस्पेक्टिव इन से बट वेमेन शुड बी रियली कम्फर्टेबल विद द वे दे आर दिस इज हू यू आर वाई कैंट यू मैम वर्क दैट वे यूजली वीमेन डोंट सी द बॉडीज इन देर ओन ऑन देर ओन टर्म्स और इन देर ओन कॉन्टेक्ट इट्स ऑलवेज समन एल्स इज परसेप्शन ऑफ देर बॉडी इट वर्क दैट वे वेरी बड़ी इज थिंकिंग लाइक दैट इफ यू हैव टू कॉन्स्टेंटली समीज you can forget about it if you're not constantly reminded about it for little things and it's and it's very stupid to say that the average person is going to stop thinking about their bodies women don't tend to see breasts as normal parts of their body but as something you know like some special special part with special significance and we see our body in relationship to men it's not, never for our own self i may pride myself on being different but in many ways i am i am influenced by what others think or especially other men think not everybody not every tom dick and harry who is walking on the street and staring right into them but the men in my life yes maybe one in a thousand women would say i don't think about it at all I don't know a sing I don't know even that one in a thousand I, everybody thinks about it in one way or the other either they would like to be a little more or a little less or a little or a little that a little is always there mm-hmm.